And point number four says, Christ's Father, the one true God revealed. Christ's Father, the one true God revealed. And uh, we are looking in our series, chapter one of the revelation of Jesus Christ. And this is part two. Okay. Christ's Father, the one true God revealed is point number four and the text for this point are Revelation 1 verse 4, Revelation 4 verses 8 to 11, 1 Corinthians 8 verses 5 to 6, and John 20 verse 17. Okay, so we go right away to our Bible and look at Revelation 1 verse 4. We are reading from the Berean Study Bible. It says there, John to the seven churches in the province of Asia. Grace and peace to you from him who is and was and is to come. Okay, grace to you, grace and peace to you from him who was, who is and was and is to come and from the seven spirits before his throne. All right, so we have here someone who is, who has a throne, his throne. And someone who is described as is, was, and is to come. All right? So we need to find out more information on this person. All right? So we can go to Revelation 4 and look at verses 8 and 9. Revelation 4, verses 8 and 9 to get more information about this being who sits on the throne and who is and was and is to come. It says there, And each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around and within day and night. They never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. So here we have the same uh, title here or the same description the one who was and is and is to come is the Lord God Almighty. So the one sitting on the throne is or was um, in terms of at the time John saw it, was the Lord God Almighty. All right. The Lord God Almighty. Let's read verse 9. It says, And whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to the one seated on the throne who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before the one seated on the throne and they worship him who lives forever and ever and they cast their thrones before the th before the throne all right so it goes on to say saying worthy are you our lord and god to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things by your will they exist and came to be so notice the one seated on the throne okay the one seated on the throne again the one seated on the throne so lots of information about the one seated on the throne he is the lord god almighty he was and is and is to come he lives forever and ever he receives glory and honor and thanks and what else can we say here? He created all things, and by his will, all things exist and came to be. So this is the Father, the creator of all things. And he was the one in Revelation chapter 1 verse 4, who the first greeting when 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 john when john made the greeting grace and peace from the one seated on the throne right the one who is and was and is to come grace and peace was being sent to the the the, the believers in the province of asia in the seven churches so that that grace and peace was being sent to them from the father the creator of all things and being that this is a vision that John is seeing 
we need not think that John has seen a photograph, that the vision is a photograph of heaven, but we need to understand that these are symbolic representations. So the throne depicts that or, 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 or is saying that this one possesses great authority. He, he, he is ruling he has, uh, and even he is a judge also, because these are what the, the, the image of a throne in John's time meant, okay? Thrones meant these things. One, those who sat on thrones were usually kings, were usually ju judges, and they had great authority and power. So this, this one who sits on the throne, the father, he is the great judge the great ruler okay so revelation 1 4 was revealing that it was the almighty god the father the creator of all things who was sending grace and peace to the remnant in john's time and that would have been a great source of comfort for the believers in their time of tribulation now this is in harmony what uh, we just read there about the creator is in harmony with the apostolic teaching if we go and look at for example first corinthians 8 verse 5 to 6 first corinthians 8 verse 5 to 6 look what it says there what the apostolic teaching concerning the father was okay it says for even the Apostle Paul writing here, he says, For even if they are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as they are many so-called gods and lords, yet for us, meaning for us, the apostolic teaching, us being the remnant, the people of God, who, uh, who were in Christ, he said, for us, there is but one God. <laughs> Right? There is but one God. And who is that one God? The Father. Okay? And why is the Father the one God? He says, because from whom all things came and for whom we exist. Okay? So you notice that is the same thing that the, the, the beings, the heavenly beings were praising the one sitting on the throne because by him, all things were created and exist okay and this is the same thing that the apostle um, paul was teaching he says for us apostles this is how we understand it there is but one god <laughs> yes there are many so-called gods in other words there are there are other beings and people and persons in heaven and in her and on earth who have influence who have authority who have power and ability and and who are judges and who are sons of God but for us for the apostolic understanding and teaching is that there is one God <laughs> and that one God is the father why because from him all things came he is the source of everything right and for whom we exist okay it, we, our existence is because of him. And then he goes on to say now, and there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we exist. So we understand now that Jesus is Lord of the Father's creation. Okay? And this was something that was common in the apostolic times. You would have a, 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 an emperor or a king over an, over, over an empire. And within that empire, that king would have lords governing over specific regions of the empire. Okay, So they would have a king and then he would have lords. And the, the, the lords would rule with the authority of the king. So whatever they say comes with the authority of the king. Similarly, Christ reigns and rules over his father's creation and he has the authority of the father. 
right? And it says, through whom it is through Christ all things came. So the Father created all things by means of Christ. Because remember, Jesus Christ is also known as the Logos or the Word of God. So it is by the Word of God all things were created by the Word of God. So the Father speaking the Word of God, it is through that means all things came into existence. And that's that's what this is saying. All right. I have a little chart here that depicts the word God. Okay. Because you see, when we go back here to Paul's understanding, it says there are so-called gods. And uh, many of us, well, at least when I uh, was... Um, received my teaching concerning the so-called Godhead and the so-called Trinity, a lot of emphasis was placed on the little G here and the big G, all right? But in the Greek, it's the exact same word. There's no capitalization or anything, right? In the Greek, the word is theos, and in the Hebrew, the word is Elohim, okay? We, 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 I, it, it is only of recent times through study I, come, I came to understand that the word God is not the name of the Father. Okay? The Father's name, the Almighty's name is not God. God is a generic term that is used to describe beings which possess great power, intellect, and or influence, right? That is just, that's just, it's just like a word like king. It's a word like um, lord or governor, right? Except it has a more, a higher or more supreme um, weight to it. But um, the name <laughs> of the Almighty is not God, okay? It's God is a general term. To describe someone of his stature. Good? So let me just demonstrate to you with this little um, chart that I have here. And we notice that uh, what, I, what I was saying just now, that the word Elohim, which is the Hebrew word, which is translated in your um, English Bible as God or sometimes gods, depending on the context, depending on the verb that follows it. If the verb that follows Elohim is a sing is a um, singular verb, then it is translated English God. If the verb is plural, then it is translated as gods. Okay, but this term is a general term for beings possessing great power, intellect, and or influence for example when you look in your bible the 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 um, the word elohim applies to yahweh and that's the most frequent application for yahweh he is described as yahweh elohim okay um yahweh god or jehovah god or however you want to um there are so many different pronunciations of this word <laughs> yah yahweh you know, Yahweh, right? But anyway, so I'm using Yahweh for now. So the most frequent time the, the word Elohim is used is in connection with Yahweh, okay, which is the Father. And for example, if you go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, you will see the word there written as Lord, L-O-R-D, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that in the original is um, Yahweh, and then the word God is Elohim. But also, the word Elohim is used for deities of non-Israelite nations. Now, this is where in your, in your Bible, in your English Bible, it would be translated with a common G, okay? And then it would be plural, gods, okay? Well, not all the time. Sometimes it would be God or gods. But they would put a common G to indicate this is not Yahweh God. This is the other 
gods of the Israelite nations. For example, Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, you would see an example of that. But also, the word is used for judges. So in Exodus 22, verses 8 and 9, you will see the word judges, but it's actually Elohim. Okay? And then it's also translated as angels. For example, in Psalm 8, verse 5, you see the word angels in your Bible. Some Bibles render it angels. Some would put in the correct word Elohim. But for like the King James and some of these mainstream Bibles, most mainstream Bibles, they would use the word angels in Psalm 8, verse 5. But the word in the Hebrew is Elohim. The word is also used for idols. Okay? Uh, <coughs> these um, graven images which were worshipped by the heathen nations. Genesis 31 verse 30. Actually, um, I think it was uh, Jacob's family who had these uh, little idols and they were called um, images, right? And in, in, your, in your King James or modern Bible, it is called images. But the word there is actually Elohim, <laughs> all right? And also, sons of God are also called Elohim, as in, in um, Psalm 82, verse 6. Psalm 82, verse 6, sons of God are also called Elohim, right? So, <clears throat> so the word Elohim is not God's name, is not the name of the Father. And if you see, I'm so accustomed to saying it that I even, um, I see, I have to train myself to say um, Elohim or God is not the name of our heavenly father it's his it, it's a term that describes someone of his stature all right and so um as we saw there in in in, in the scripture now where paul uh acknowledges um in verse five he acknowledges that there are many gods you know there are deities, there are judges, there are angels, there are even idols, there are sons of God, right? But there is a, 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 a supreme one who is greater than all of them because he is the creator. He is the source from which all things came into existence, right? So the apostolic teaching is that there is one God <laughs> and that one God is the Father right and then that one God now the Lord Jesus governs his creation and the Lord Jesus was the means by which he created okay because we know in John 1 verse 1 we have the Logos in the beginning was the Logos which is another name for Jesus Christ before he became human in the beginning was the Logos and the Logos was with God now in the Greek in your English Bible it says and the word was God but in the Greek it actually says and God was the was the Logos okay so there's a, an intimate relationship between the father and his word <laughs> okay there's an intimate relationship between the Father and His Word, okay? So His Word, when He spoke, He created, and then by His Word also, He governs His creation, all right? <laughs> okay, so you can compare your understanding with what the apostle, with what the apostolic um, teaching is, okay? So, the Lord Je uh, Jesus Christ is the Lord over his Father's creation. For it is through him, through Jesus, through the Logos, that the Father created all things. So, Christ, the Logos, the Word of God, is revealed as the active agency by which the Father created. And he, the Logos, Christ, governs the Father's creation creation now christ also by this by by this definition now it is easy for us to see why christ what why christ said what he said in john chapter 20 verse 17 okay so let's go there john chapter 20 
verse 17. All right? <clears throat> John chapter 20, verse 17. This is uh, on the day uh, uh, or the morning of Christ's resurrection where Mary uh, come to the tomb and she discovered uh, Christ there and she began to embrace him. He said, do not cling to me, Jesus said, for I have not, as I have not yet ascended to the Father, right? Remember the Father, the one true God, okay? But go and tell my brothers, I am ascending to my Father and look now, your Father. So here, Christ now <clears throat> is saying to his disciples, and by extension, he's saying to us that his father <laughs> is our father. So Christ has, has, has lifted, has lifted humanity onto the same level as himself. All right? <laughs> Christ has lifted humanity onto the same level as himself because he says, my father and your father. Then he says, to my God and your God, indicating that Christ worships the father. Christ worships the father. The father is Jesus' God. The, the father is God of the word, of the Logos, right? So we understand that grace and peace got into Revelation 1 verse 4, which we are deep diving into Revelation 1 verse 4. It is revealed there that grace and peace were being sent from the Father through the seven spirits which were flowing from the throne of the Father through the Logos, the word of the Father, and that grace and peace was flowing to the remnant people of God in the time of John. All right? See, because the Father is the source of everything. So the grace and peace were coming from him as the source. It was flowing through his spirit and through his word, which is the, which is the Son of God, the Logos, and that it was going to the Remnant people, okay? They received the grace and peace, okay? Now, the, 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 the son, Jesus said in, in one place in John chapter 16, he says, I have proceeded and come out from my father. Okay? So we will deal with, with the son probably in, an, in the next study. <laughs> so, so I want to focus on the Father right about now. So, okay, I want to focus on the Father. But what we see in here, to my God and your God, Jesus worshipped the Father, okay? Jesus' God was the Father. He, the Father, was worshipped by the Son and the Son called the Father my God. All right? However, the Father has no God. <laughs> the Father has no God. He calls no one Father. He calls no one his God because that is why he is called the Most High God. All right? Because as, it's, as, as, as the apostolic teaching said, for us, there is but one God, the Father. Why? Because all things came from him. So there was nothing before him. <laughs> all right? So then he cannot call any other, he cannot worship any other God because there is none before him. There was, there's, and there's none higher than him. However, the Son worships the Father as his God, right? Because it is from the Father, the Son proceeded out as the Word of God. All right? So the Father is the Most High God. The Father does not have a Father. He is self-existent. All right? So the Revelation vision revealed that the beings in heaven worship the one seated on the throne. And they ascribe to him all power and glory. Why? Because he created all things and it was being revealed 
that his master plan was to bring about the kingdom of heaven in his desire to be one with man who was made in his image and in his likeness. 